Debbie, we have in front of us here what we commonly refer to as equivalent fractions. What does equivalence is, you know, really mean? Okay, so in mathematics, equivalence is really a big idea. And there's really a couple of main um, ideas under that is equivalence means either same quantity or amount or the same type of a relationship. So we're talking about relationships and quantities, so they're equivalent in both those ways. That's right. So the relationship here is the same. Are you talking about the denominators versus the numerators? Or? That's one way that we can look at this, is that we can notice that there are some relationships that remain the same whenever we have it in this type of a representation. Okay. In another session, we explored uh, the four models for teaching fractions. I think we should go back and now have a look at what equivalence means in relation to each of those four models. Right, because it changes. Okay. And so we need to make sure that we have kids focus on the right things for okay. each model. So let's do that. Okay. We're going to start with an area model. So we have um, two area models. Okay, so what, what, let's back up. Why is this an area model? So an area model is one that we use uh, the attribute of area to represent that mathematical quantity, the, the amount. Mm -hmm. the, one of the features is that often the partitions are done in multiple directions. Right. Um, so you'll see that we've got multiple directions for our cuts mm -hmm. for the top and bottom. Uh, at, at the top we have three-fourths shown, mm -hmm. which we um, in previously showed that that's equivalent to six-eighths, which we have shown in this bottom model. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we want to make sure that kids recognize is what do we mean by equivalent fractions when we have the an area, area model. model. Right. Right. And again, the most important feature is area. So if you notice, when we look at the shaded regions for both the three-fourths and the six-eighths, what's the relationship between the areas? Well, three, three, I might say three-quarters, by the way, but three-quarters or three-fourths right. covers the same area as six-eighths. And the important thing is the area. We have it organized, each of these parts, shaded parts, so that it's easy for us to see that mm -hmm. they're equivalent but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be all touching, that the, the parts, that as long as we have the same area covered. So what you're saying is I could, you know, shade, I sh could shade a different a number of, of six here. I might have this one here shaded rather than this one. That's correct. And it, yeah, it doesn't have to be this shape, which I might call an L shape, mm -hmm. as long as the total area is the same as that area. That's correct. And that, I guess that'd be a big idea for kids to, you know, to, to grasp. It is a big idea and sometimes an overlooked idea in our classrooms. Mm, sure. And in the lower grades, uh, early grades at least, we can do uh, some good paper folding activities around this as well. And I guess we'll leave that to another session, but uh, yeah, we'll explore ways That's of a great teaching equivalents. First um, entree into the um, idea of equal area is by using paper. Okay. So area model, it covers the same, the same area. Right. Correct. Okay. Second model. Okay. We're going to look at a length model. Again, we're going to stay with the same two equivalent fractions, three-fourths and six-eighths. And again, I'm going to ask you, why is this a length model? So I see an area here. Yeah, and, um, and you do see an area. The difference being uh, really two key points is that it kind of tends to be thinner so mm -hmm. that kids are really thinking about one the direction is, of one direct, is, length. is length. The other key point is that the partitions are that done in one direction. One direction, not multi-directional. So that students only have to scan mm -hmm. um, from one direction to the other side, one sure. dimensional piece. So here we have three fourths or three quarters. Correct. And six. Six eighths. eighths. So the important feature to focus on with this model is that it, we're talking equal length. length. So three fourths or three quarters mm -hmm. is the same length as six eighths. Correct. Uh, once again, it doesn't really matter that the parts, the shaded parts are touching. Mm. So these also can be uh, somewhat shaded. It's just sure. that the total sum of the length. The total. So mm -hmm. had it been, yeah, this Let's one over here over. rather than this one, when I brought, if I brought them all together, it'd be the same length as. Incidentally, I can see the same area as well. Yes. But unlike uh, the area model, I cannot discuss that in terms of length. Correct. So our language needs to be very precise with the different models that we're, mm. we're looking at. So when using an area model, make sure that kids are focusing on same area. When we're using a length model, that we... Focus um, on, indeed, the length or the attribute of length. That's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go to our third model, mm -hmm. which is our number line model. And in this case, um, 
with uh, what is a whole amount, and that's going to be the distance from zero to one mm -hmm. is our whole amount. And we're gonna continue to consider three-fourths being equivalent to six-eighths. What do you notice about the way that this number line has been partitioned? Well, there's, there's four equal groups on the, uh, on the upside, the top mm -hmm. side of the number line, and the bottom has been divided into eighths. Right, and so just like the previous models, we show different partitions. Yeah. So we can do that as well on a number line, where yep. we show fourths as well as eighths on the same number line. So I guess I could uh, mark that on. So I think the other two models were, uh, we showed three, three fourths. fourths. Or three so, quarters. So uh, one fourth, one quarter, two, three. Good. So three, three quarters, fourths. Mm -hmm. or three fourths. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom we have the eighths. So one, two, three, four, five, six eighths. So indeed this is showing me that three fourths is positioned on the same place. That's right. Spot. Right. As six eighths on that number line. And what we have to carefully consider is not only where we would label that as occupied in the same spot, but what these numbers represent is the distance away from zero. And that's on what a the number, number line. line model is. It's a it's a length model. It is a length it's model. A, a variation of the length model. It is. Model. It is a variation, and we have to carefully develop that idea, being that instead of really focusing on just length, it's really the distance. So when I described that on a length model, it didn't matter whether the parts, the shaded parts were touching. That's right. It matters here. It really here. matters here. That's right, because it the reference point is zero. It's a, it's a distance from zero. Right. So they have to be consecutive pieces. They do. Like. And so it's um, where we would label it here, what we really are talking about is this distance from zero to this spot is three-fourths of the way from zero to one. Right. Right, so we discussed equivalence for the area model, uh, the length model, and also the number line model, which is a, a variation of the length model. Mm -hmm. I guess that only just leaves the set model. What does equivalence mean when we refer to the set model? Okay, let's look at that. So, what do you notice about the two different sets that we have? Still, we're looking at uh, three fourths here mm -hmm. and six eighths here. There's something well, really interestingly different. Well, I'm seeing th three of the, there's four equal parts, and what I like to do is have a frame around it mm -hmm. so I know what is. Can What's I? the whole? Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I'll uh, draw that's that's the, I guess the whole. Yes. Correct. Uh, and there's three of the four equal parts shaded or colored blue. Right. Um, here, that I'm assuming you intend to be the whole. That's right. And six of the equal parts, yeah, there's eight total, so six equal parts are colored blue. Mm -hmm. So three fourths apparently is equivalent to six eighths. I don't know whether that's that obvious here. That's right, because in our previous models, the whole has always been congruent or the same. So when we were dealing with the area model, we had two squares that had showed the same oh, just area. Let me stop you right there. Mm -hmm. oh, let me gra grab those. Here we have the, uh, the area model. So the holes are indeed the same shape and the same size. They are. Right. Right. Likewise, when I look at the length model, the holes are the same length. They are the same length, congruent. Mm -hmm. Number line model? Always from zero to one is the unit. That yeah. happens all the time, right? So right. it's same distance. As, as opposed to this one. The now, count is different. The count's different. Right, so on a set model, the attribute that we're really focusing on is the count. What's interesting and what can be really challenging for students to show equivalence in a set model is this idea that the whole amount. I can different. see that being very problematic. It is and, problematic. And uh, I can imagine why this has been left uh, to much later in school, if at all. Now you're getting into ratios. They are getting into ratios where they can have to consider the the relationship between the counts remains consistent. Right. Um, so there's a couple of ways that students, when they're ready for it, make sense of why these two are equivalent. So one way is to consider just the relationship between blue to white. Mm -hmm. So we have three to one, three to one, three to one, or that's a part, part kind of a relationship, or we can consider three to four. 
is consistently done here three mm -hmm. to four right three to four and I can keep adding more rows you can, can. I have to find other and that's what we do is we continue mm. to add more rows to kind of build mm. but the whole changes for students yeah I, that's very interesting I've never really thought about that uh, in terms of equivalence with with the set model that's why that should be delayed yeah mm -hmm. sure all these four models Debbie are all, are all dealing with fractions that are less than one correct we can also find equivalent fractions that go beyond one right that's correct and so what we're going to look at next is um, fractions that are greater than one and also this idea that what we can sometimes consider or call renaming falls under that umbrella of equivalence all right let's take a look so what I've got is an area model shown up here and a number line model shown down mm -hmm. here. And these are going to um, connect together. So if we take a look first at the area model and I was to ask you to kind of tell me or describe to me what you see is shaded, how would you describe that to me? I see it was many ways. I could see three three holes okay. and uh, some of those are, are shaded completely. So they each are divided into sixths. Mm -hmm. Six equal parts, so there's six there, there's another six, there's 12, there's another you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 sixths are shaded in that top picture. Okay. Or I could say I can see two of the holes mm -hmm. and some other six. So one, two, and four six. Four six of that third one. So depending on what is you want to actually count, whether you're counting the unit fractions and getting um, 16 of those one six, or you're choosing to count how much or how many holes that you've mm -hmm, got, mm -hmm. in this case two and an additional four six of that hole, um, those are equivalent in the sense that, especially here, we're covering the same area. Right, so the idea that, you know, renaming uh, 16 sixths as being the same as two and four sixths. That renaming is also falls under the idea of equivalence. Of equivalence, fractions. and we want to make sure that that is understood right. by children. That when they are in these um, engaged in these activities that we might call renaming, that we go back and connect it to, to equivalence. equivalence. And what's your other uh, your illustration here on number nine? So um, same quantities. So if you notice at the top one of the very first things that we can consider is that we had two of those whole amounts mm -hmm. and then an additional four six of that third mm -hmm. hole that we had for two and two four, and four six. six or if we want to focus on counting the how many one six that we have we had twelve, 12 of them 12, six, and an additional four, six four gives us 16 six. so on a number line model we can show that these um, different renaming mm -hmm. um, pieces make sense because the distance from zero to this point remains consistent. Mm. You know what, I really don't want to think about this in relation to the set model. No, <laughs> not a good model to use in that case. Tough. That's right, tough. number line model is great. Well, both these models work very That's well. That's right, they and do. I, I can imagine and we can show the two, but the, the length model too would also, be, would also work. It does good. work well. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. How would you summarize this brief session? Okay, so equivalence is a big idea in mathematics. We have to consider a few things with equivalence same quantity or, mm -hmm. or you know amount or same relationships so in these four models that we've talked about sometimes it's about really seeing different partitioning mm -hmm. creates equivalency sometimes the different ratio Ratios. relationship shows equivalency but also renaming is related to equivalence Thanks, Debbie. And in another session, we'll then look at those four models again and how we're going to use those models to teach the idea of equivalence. Exactly. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks.